this fight for equality and social justice. And, um, you know, in, in this world, I've always believed there's two things that you can't live without. And it has nothing to do with food and water. It's love and hope. And I don't think we're doing a good job in our country giving that to everyone. And I think that needs to be the focus here. And um, I think that's what you know, baseball, the, the Philadelphia Phillies are standing up for. People need to have love and hope and, and listen. Joe, just a, a quick baseball question. Do you expect to play tomorrow and any pitching plans? Uh, do I expect to play tomorrow? Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't heard otherwise. Um, in, in our rotation, okay. uh, we'll, Wheeler will pitch tomorrow. He will stay on schedule. Thanks a lot, Joe. Brittany Droli, The Athletic, DC. Hey, Brittany. Hey, Davey. Um, I'm wondering, you were really emotional last night. I'm wondering um, how you heard of this. Did Joe, did you text Davey and kind of what, what events transpired after that? Yeah, so we, you know, we, um, I talked to Joe around 2.15. Uh, he called me up. Um, last night, I, you know, after, after we had our media session, yeah, I was emotional. Uh, I decided to, you know, I didn't, I let the players just, I told them to show up late. I knew that today was probably, and last night was not going to be uh, a good day. Um, so I, I wanted them to show up late, uh, just get ready and just kind of focus on the game. Um, if there was going to be a game, I wasn't so sure myself. Uh, we were going to have a meeting at four o'clock. Before then I heard from, from Joe at 2.15. And he told me that, you know, in, in support of his players, that um, they, they didn't want to play. And I immediately said that I would support him, his uh, his organization, because honestly, this is a brotherhood. Uh, we bang heads every day on the field. We love to compete, but uh, we stand with one another when these things happen. So um, I, I talked to him. We were in agreement that we won't play today. Uh, I then started calling our players and telling them what was going on. Um, got their thoughts. We did have a meeting, but before then I talked to most of them and got their thoughts and they were all in agreement that they want to support their fellow uh, players and they respect their decision. So um, this has, you know, like, like Joe said, you know, this things have to change. You guys know how I feel about it. Um, there's ugliness in this world so it needs to be fixed and it needs to start now. Megan Matamuro, The Athletic Philadelphia. Hey, Joe. Um, how much were you involved or listening during the conversations um, players had? And um, if you were involved, what was the message among them? Um, and did you take anything away from those conversations? So are you talking about the conversations that the players had today? Yeah, were, were, you, were you involved? Were those completely player only? Did you have a chance to listen in to what those conversations entailed? No, those were players only as well. I think it should have been um, because, you know, the players have their feelings. And, and I talked to Reese, you know, a little bit about the meeting and, and what time it would take place. And then I told Reese that I worked of whatever you guys decided to do um, because I believe in them and I trust them. And I know that there's things that, you know, they deal with as, as being part of a 28 man roster um, that they need to stay together. And um, they met probably, I'm going to guess for 30 to 35 minutes. And I got a call from Reese with the decision and I told him I'm completely on board. I got you back. And just a follow-up to that, how important was it for you that the team was unified in the decision? I mean, there were some teams yesterday that had a couple players sit out, but the team played. There were other teams that, you know, games were canceled because everyone collectively sat out. Was it important to you that, that um, it, everything was done together? Definitely. Um, we're in this together. And, you know, you have – 40 people in a clubhouse, maybe 50 people in a clubhouse, and everyone probably has a little bit different opinion on maybe how we solve this, but we all believe there has to be change, and we all believe that we're going to stay together. So 
I was proud of them for what they did and how they decided to stay together. And um, I'm in full support. Howard Eskin, Sports Radio 94 WIP. How are you there? See him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll come back to you, Howard. Jessica yeah, Camerato, we, we, oh, we, we got you now, Howard. We got you now. Go ahead. I couldn't, I couldn't unmute myself. I apologize. Uh, we know there's problems in the country. Uh, it, it's really... It's worse than I, I think we all imagined, uh, especially with recent uh, things going on. And there are things that have to be done. But people have asked me, what, what do the players hope to accomplish? And this goes for, it looks like, all sports right now. What do they hope to accomplish by postponing the games? The awareness is there. It's a, national, it's a lead story nationally anyway. What do they hope to accomplish? Uh, Joe? Uh, and Dave, if you want to join in afterwards, that's fine too. Well, I, I think the one thing about being a professional athlete is you have a voice and that voice can be heard all over the country, all over the world. And what they want is change. You know, everyone wants change. And every time that we have some of these occurrences, it seems to take a step back. And there are a lot of people with heavy hearts out there. And there are a lot of people that don't, necessarily have to deal with what some others have to deal with. I heard, I heard something from Charles Barkley today that I've never even thought of. Charles Barkley expressed that he's exhausted. He's exhausted for having to answer questions about social injustice. Now, that's not something that necessarily comes across my plate every day, but it does others. And, and I think it's really important that we hear from everyone in their opinion on this and what they have to deal with. People are just asking to be heard so there's change made. Um, they're not asking for money. They're not asking for a lot of different things. We want change. We want this to be the best place in the world to live. And unless we do something about it, it's not going to be. And I don't think that's how this country was founded. I really don't. Thanks, Joe. You know, for me, this is, a, you know, this is a humanitarian issue. We're all human beings. Um, when I got to go home at night and talk about my grandkids and how they're going to grow up, and my, my kids, the rest of their lives growing up, and not think about the game, whether we win or lose, and focus on what we do best, um, it hurts. It hurts a lot. If you know, we go through this day in, day out, I hear from the players how they struggle, you know, knowing that we're trying to do our best to go out there and play this game, but there's things going on in this world that they can't put aside. It's time to speak up. I think that's the message we're trying to send now. We got to speak up. Like Joe said, we got to change. We got to change now. It ain't going to get any better. If these guys will speak up, and we don't speak up. Jessica Camerato, Nationals.com. Hey, JB and, uh, and Joe. This question can be for both of you. The season has been filled with ups and downs, and your players have had to address so many different types of issues well beyond baseball. What have you learned about your players and their voices that you wouldn't have gotten to know just if things were just simply baseball this year? I think what I've learned more about our group is how united they are. And um, like I said, how uh, they, think, they, they think more just about other people and what, what transpires around, around not just the game, but life itself. Um, it's been tough. You know, pandemic, uh, all the social injustice, uh, racism, all this stuff. These guys have, have, have stuck with one another through and through. And, and today is a perfect example of, of what, how we feel as, as a group, as a unit, that we stuck together. You know, the Phillies, the Nationals, 
we believe in something, we believe in a cause, and uh, we pull through regardless of, and we all, we all want to play. And there's no doubt about it, but this means more, and this is more important to us than going out there and playing right now. You know, what I've learned is how resilient our players are, but how caring they are about so many different things that go on in life and how important the future of this country is, not only for them, but for their children and their grandchildren, that they want a better place for them. And it may not change a lot in their lives or their parents' lives, but they wanna make sure that the generations that are coming after us are cared for, are treated equally, and have a chance to thrive in this country. And that's what I love, because when I think about my parents, all my parents wanted was that I had a better life than them. And I see that in these players, how much they care about the future of their families in this country. Jesse Dockerty, Washington Post. Hey, this, is, uh, this is for Davey. Uh, just logistically first, are you guys traveling to Boston tonight? And um, do you expect to just, are you assuming you're going to play baseball tomorrow? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm definitely um, hoping we play. I, you know, I want our, I want our guys. To, we want to get to Boston. Hopefully, you know, get a good nice rest and uh, come back tomorrow and, and, and play tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's, you know, is is another special day. It's Jackie Robinson day. So, um, for me, I think Jackie would want us to play tomorrow. Man, he brought unity to this game. Uh, and I think it's important I remember that. And David, jo Josh Harrison's going to talk to us um, soon here. He uh, hasn't been with you guys for a while. He is a veteran. Uh, just just want, wanted to know how maybe he was chosen to maybe speak on behalf of the team today with Reese and, and maybe did he raise yeah, you know, he, yeah, so he, he was a um, – he's a veteran player. He understands he's been in this game a long time. Um, he's seen many different things. He uh, actually had a conversation – with uh, uh, so I thought it was important that he come out here and share that conversation and um, and what he you know what what his views on what what he believes uh, this is all about. So um, he's a voice, you know. He's, I know he's new to us, but he, you know he's he's not new to me. I've known him for a long time, um, and he's not new around the slip. He's got many friends on different teams that he talks to a bunch. So uh, I thought it was important that he comes out here and, and, and shares his views. Thank you. Yeah. Mark Zuckerman, MassInSports.com. Right, for, uh, for Davey, but Joe, also, if you have thoughts and you'd like to share, feel free. Um, you talked about wanting to play tomorrow and the reasons for that, too. Obviously, a lot of guys, probably their hearts are not in it to play tonight. Um, there's still a month to go in the season. Who knows how this is all going to play out? But what makes you uh, confident or are you concerned at all that along the way there may be more days and times when – people's hearts aren't fully into it. Uh, and, and what do you do when that happens? Yeah, I mean, there, there are a lot of concerns, you know, but um, as Joe will tell you, you know, uh, we wear, you know, we wear our hearts on our sleeves for these guys. Um, we feel for them. Um, a lot of nights, as you, as, you, as you know, Mark, I don't sleep, you know, thinking about individual players or multiple players. Um, but you got to do the best you can to understand where they're coming from and try to get them to understand you know, the importance of what they're doing. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to bring joy and happiness to, to homes every night, you know, by playing. We really are. And, and they got to focus on what they believe in and why this game means so much for them as well. Uh, you know, and I think it's, they understand, you know, I talked to a lot of players today about it, you know, that, you know, it's hard, you know, they, they go out there, it's hard, but for three and a half hours or four hours, they kind of get to forget you know, what's transpiring, and they try to, they try to go out there and do the best they can, uh, whether it's for their family, their teammates, their organization, uh, and for the fans, the, the people that, that are watching them. I mean, it, this, this all goes through their mind, and they're, you know, it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard situation right now that we're going through, you know, starting with this whole uh, pandemic and everything, and now this, uh, now what we're going through now with this injustice and racism, it's hard, it's hard for everybody. Uh, but, you know, we deal with it day by day. You know, I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. As you guys know, I focus on the here and now. 
And, uh, you know, we're going to get on the plane and uh, head to Boston. And like I said, I hope that, you know, tomorrow we're, we're playing at 7.30, uh, playing the Boston Red Sox. And, you know, one of the things that I think players are really good at doing, and, and probably it's the reason that they've had success in this game, is they can focus for that three hours, like Davey said, on what they love to do, and it's kind of a chance to get away. But it doesn't mean that they sleep well that night or, you know, they get everything else in that they usually would. And those are your concerns as a manager, that players are getting – you know, their proper rest and their mind is not so occupied. But I think they're really good at going out and doing what they love and just putting it behind because not only have we had the pandemic and the social injustice, I mean, these players deal with things all the time and you can never forget that they're human beings. You know, they have kids that get sick. They have parents that get sick. They have wives that, you know, that go through things. They go through things and they can go out and do their job. But it's after that that you really worry about them, that they're getting everything that they need. And Brittany Drolly, The Athletic DC. A lot of teams have sent out statements and, and separately talked. I'm wondering, this is for either of you, why you felt like it was important to host these, to have these two press conferences um, together. Because we're in this together. You know, this, this is not competition we're in this together that there's change in this country and we can battle for three hours, you know, the night before and the night before, but that doesn't mean anything. This, this is life and this is forever. And this means a lot more than the competitiveness that we have against each other. That's not even second in the line. Um, so I think that's why we're doing it together because we care about each other. 100% agree. I mean, it didn't, um, like I said, we didn't, we didn't have a meeting till four o'clock today, but the minute I heard from Joe and, um, and talked to Joe, I didn't need to have a meeting to decide what we were, we were going to do as, a, as an organization. And I knew the players would be on board. I mean, that's how strongly we feel about each other. Thank you. And final question, Evan, Evan Lambie. Thanks. This is for both of you. Uh, besides the statements and supporting the postponement, are either of your teams taking any concrete steps to support the athletes in their calls for social justice and racial justice? And what would those be? I think the best thing that we can do is have discussions and listen and, and offer to help other people that are going through very difficult times. You know, I, I, I'm just going to speak up on, on behalf of, uh, you know, Josh being asked to come in here. I had conversations with Josh because he was in our spring camp before we even got to spring camp. And he has so many insights, and I was fascinated with his thoughts that I took them all down, and it's in a note in my phone. So I think when you get a chance to – you're going to understand why Josh is here when he comes up here. And, and I know – that I never had a chance to manage him in a real game, but I had a chance to manage him in spring training games. And um, he's a special person. And I think he has some valuable insights. So the biggest thing that, you know, one of the greatest things that I thought we did in spring training is we had a, an hour, hour and 15 minute meeting where we gave everyone a chance to have the floor and talk about their feelings, no matter what race or background you came from about what was going on in our country. And I thought it was really powerful. Yeah, and Joe hit it on the nose. I mean, these, these are ongoing conversations that we have constantly. Um, and he's right about Josh. I mean, he's electric when he speaks and people listen. Um, and you'll, you'll get to know him here in a second. But, you know, these conversations are ongoing. They're not going to stop. Um, we're learning each and every day we're learning about different things and how to handle situations. I, mean, I learn every day from these guys. Uh, they teach me so much, uh, not only about the game, but it, uh, about people. Um, but, and I think that's important. And they, they feed off each other. And they're, like I said, they're united together. Um, we see, no, we see no, no, no different race in our clubhouse. I can tell you that right now. Uh, we're all together. We all bleed the same. So uh, I think that's important to know that we all feel that way about one another and 
like I told Joe, you know, and I told him to make sure he knows his teammates understand that, or his team understands that I support them 100% for not wanting to play today. Now we'll continue to support them 100%.